<laughs> I'm Nura Mozoon. I'm Dr. Nura for a lot of people. And I did my graduate work in marriage and family therapy. So my, my master's and my PhD are both in marriage and family therapy. Once I got out of graduate school, I really decided that my passion uh, was in the love relationship and the couple's dynamic. How do you tell the difference of when this is just a friendship and when um, there's something more, like it can be a deep friendship that grows into romance? What I have found is that there tends to be kind of three categories that an individual can fall into when it comes to attraction. Um, there, There's the first category of uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm attracted to you. No question about it. It's, it's big and there, and I feel it and, and totally down. <laughs> then there's the second compartment, which is like, I'm definitely not attracted and I don't see that ever changing. And then there's the third one, which is not attracted, but who knows, maybe. And I think it's the maybe bucket <laughs> that actually seems to have a lot of potential because you're not viscerally uh, repulsed by them, uh, but you're also not overly distracted by mm. the pull. And so there's room for the friendship to actually grow and that friendship can influence the attraction. And so when you start out genuinely as friends, and I don't mean like you call yourself friends for two weeks before you get engaged. But when you genuinely start out as friends, you're no longer presenting the version of yourself that you want them to accept. You just are who you are. And it's much more natural and, and organic in that way. And then often the attraction can grow from there. So to answer your initial question, I would say if somebody falls into the maybe bucket, there's hope or that that tends to be where there is the most hope for it to turn into something down the line the you know the person that you're like i, I mean i don't see them like that but um but but it might also change i don't know why is that like why the one that you're kind of like ambivalent about i would think it'd be the one that you're just like whoa i mean the the whoa can definitely work out i didn't mean to imply that it wouldn't it, it's mm. it's what I was more thinking is that it's usually women who do this. Men do not tend to marry women that they're not attracted to. It's usually the women that are making the compromise. In yeah. That department. Women tend to marry the one that they're not attracted to, hoping that it'll come later or thinking, well, it's not Baha'i like for me to think about this sort of thing. So it doesn't matter. Um, but if somebody falls into the woe category, knock yourself out. But the woe can become a distraction too. It can- That's what it, I was curious about. Yeah, yeah. It can, it can definitely be interference because, because you want them to be attracted to you. The minute you want the other person to choose you, you, know, you now go into a space of what I call the audition, of, mm. um, of putting your best foot forward and um, filtering what you present and what you don't present. Presenting the stuff that you think makes you the most attractive and kind of holding back on the stuff that is riskier to share. But when you, when you start out kind of ambivalent and general, genuinely as friends, you're not attached to their acceptance of you. You're just comfortable. And you're also more comfortable in your own skin. When, when you're around somebody who is like incredibly attractive and you're super attracted to them, it can easily become a source of insecurity. And then that insecurity lowers your attractive quotient, for lack of a better phrase. Mm. Um, but when they're just your friend, you're more comfortable in your own skin, you're more confident, and it actually ups the likelihood of mutual attraction. I'm thinking about, um, you know, Baha'u'llah saying truthfulness is the foundation of all human virtues. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I did not think of also applying that to relationships in this way, <laughs> but of course, like yeah. from the very beginning, mm -hmm. um, I think it's just so common, uh, you know, in pop culture to say like, you know, this attitude of, um, like you said, the audition where, 
you know, we're getting to know each other and just naturally you're going to put your best foot forward. This is how I've heard it explained is that this is a natural process. And over time, you know, this is why it's like, you know, give a certain amount of time to get to know people, investigate each other's character, because naturally we're not going to be sharing everything all at once. Um, but yeah, if we apply, you know, these teachings of how love truthfulness is the foundation of all human virtues from the get go, then it sounds like we'll get better results in the end. 100%. And, and I think what, what comes with that, what the other piece of this truthfulness idea is that it's also about being truthful with yourself about who you are. Uh, That to me is the hard part. And this goes back to the relationship with yourself, but it's, it's more difficult to own imperfections that we all have, the flaws that we have, the the stuff that we're working on. These flaws, these imperfections that we all have, in my opinion, is the incompatibility of two people's flaws that breaks relationships. And so when we aren't truthful with ourselves and we're not, we don't know our own selves, we don't know what we bring to the table that, that could be a little bit more complicated to work with. And so we're not capable of sharing that with our partner either. 